Peace, peace, peace. This is your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? So we'll give a couple of seconds for a couple of people to pile in. Good morning. Good morning, champions. How are you this morning? Let me know how you guys are doing. Today is Wednesday. So hooray for Wednesday. Any day above ground is a good day. So I'm going to talk a little bit about something. I had an epiphany. Shout out to Michael. What up, Michael? Salute to you, brother. Um, I had an epiphany, so I wanted to share something with you guys. What's up, Luther? Salute, salute. Salute to everybody that's uh, joining me today. Um, let me know. You know, say good morning, man. Good morning, champions. Good morning. You guys are up and well. So, shout out to uh, China, you know, that, that's tuning in right now. Um, say hello, man. Come up in the crib and say hello to to the fam. Let me know how you guys are doing this Wednesday morning, you know. Shout out to Jer uh, Darren Epps. Um, salute to you guys. Salute, salute, salute. Sell out, shout out to Harris. Shout out to all you guys that are tuning in. Good morning, champions. A day above ground is a fabulous day, man. So I wanted to uh, say good morning to you. I wanted to do this video for a long time. I just haven't had a chance to do it because I've been, you know, locked in with a lot of other work. Shout out Londo. What up, brother? Hey, congratulations on the, 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 the new baby that's coming, man. Shout out to you, brother. Um, definitely say hello, everybody. You know, let people know where you at. Where's your hood? Where you repping? You know, what, what city, what state are you guys, um, you know, tuning in from? So I wanted to I wanted to share this epiphany that I had. And by the way, I'm on like a quad espresso, so it it, it hasn't kicked in, but I'm gonna be jacked in a minute, right? Shout out to Starbucks. You know, I had to get that. But I had this epiphany, man. I had I had a talk with a beautiful young lady out in Toledo, Ohio, right? And she was she was about to do some things, right? And it was talking to her, I realized this epiphany. Your business is not your baby. Shout out to you guys, man. Fontaine, Janice, Crystal. Shout out to you guys, man. Thank you for tuning in. Salute to you. Salute to you. Um, your business is not your baby. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking to a specific group that, and, and if this is you, you'll understand where I'm coming from. If you're the type of person that can work for somebody and you are an overachiever in helping another person's company blow up, I'm talking to you. If you're that person that is constantly receiving awards from other companies for doing stellar work, for doing amazing, amazing, um, you know, business, I'm talking to you. Your business is not your baby. I repeat, your business is not your baby. See, the thing is this, when you're working for somebody else, you are, you, you are free. You, sometimes you are more free working for somebody else's business than your own. And I'll explain why. Say you're representing a company, right? Let's say I'm representing uh, Walmart. Walmart is not me. It's not my brand. It's not my company. So if I'm an overachiever in, in Walmart, I'm going to sell the products more. I'm going to talk with more enthusiasm and, and excitement. I'm going to push more products because it's not... I don't have an emotional attachment to Walmart. So it's like, all right, boom, yeah, hey, buy this. This is a great television right here. You know what I'm saying? Or, or buy this. This is a, a, a good product for you to have in your home. And it's on sale. Now, the problem becomes when you start your own business, everything becomes personal. Everything becomes like it really is your baby. And I'm telling you right now, your business is not your baby. Do not treat your business like it is an infant child.
because you will not have that excitement. You will not have that enthusiasm to push your brand the way you need to. You're too emotionally attached to that business. So therefore, you're, you're, you're cradling it. You, you begin to um, smother the business. You don't allow the business to grow. You're, you're coddling it, cradling it, swaddling your business to the point where you do not allow it to reach more people. You understand what I mean? You taking your business way too personal where your hand is, I, I, I need to protect my business because I don't want anybody to hurt my business. Walmart got plenty of complaints. Target has plenty of complaints. You know, you're going to have that. That's, that's good. That's feedback. But too many times, and, and even me, I, I can take a person's business and I can blow it up to the next level. But when it came to my business, for some reason, I just couldn't propel it the way I needed to. And then I realized that I was sheltering and I was protecting my business like it was a newborn baby. Like, oh, no, 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 no. You got a cold? You can't come near my, my, my business. You know what I mean? You're going to get my business sick. Oh, oh you, you're, um, you know, you've done bad business practices. I can't have you around my business. When you're representing somebody else's business, you'd be like, well, pff, I'll give them a try. Heck, it's not, it's not my business. You are, your mentality is more free. You're more free to explore new options because you feel like the company that you work for isn't emotionally attached to you. You're, you're not, you do not take it personal. So if a person says, well, this store sucks. You're like, oh, well, this store sucks. Shit, it ain't my business. It ain't my company. But why do you feel that way, sir? Especially if you're in customer service. Why do you feel that way? Now you're getting feedback. Now you run the feedback to upper management, top management, or whatever. But when it comes to your business and somebody says, <laughs> like you have a t-shirt. Let's just say I created this t-shirt, right? And then somebody said, man, that t-shirt sucks. I'm taking it personal. A lot of people want to take it personal. They want to fight that person that like, the fuck do you mean, you know, you don't like my shirt. F you. F you. You all know good taste. You take it so personal that you want to attack the person instead of getting feedback and, and, and treating the business like it's a, this is what I had to do. Real talk, y'all. I literally had to take my businesses and put it in my kids and my wife name. I do not own my businesses anymore. I put it in their name because psychologically, I don't know if it's years and years of working for other people. I've been brainwashed to feel like I can perform better when the business is not personally attached to me. So therefore I put the business, my, all my businesses are in my kids and in my wife's name. That way I say, I'm working for you. I'm not working for me anymore. I'm working for you. And then I just go in. I just go in. I present it as if I'm working for a different company. Shout out to all you guys, by the way, man, that are tuning in. You guys are putting in some great comments. Thank you for all the shares. I don't know. Facebook kind of switched a couple of things around now. I can't even see. I see comments are supposed to be popping up, but it's not popping up. So let me give a couple of shout outs. Shout out to Nino. What up, TC? Uh, Domaine, Constance, Keith Woods, Bridget, uh, Shalandra, Millie, Sherilyn, Ken, Lucas, Leslie. Shout out to all you guys that are tuning in. Peace and love and blessings to all you guys, man. So I hope this is making sense to you guys, man. Like, we take our business, especially if you're a startup company. Oh my God. I am, I, I am literally saving you years of frustration and, and, and anxiety, um, a stagnation, lack of progress. Um, I'm, I'm saving you years. This is something that took me years to figure out. 
And I noticed the more and more I talk to other entrepreneurs, they feel the same way. The more I talk to CEOs of large companies, they are not emotionally attached. Think about it for a second. I'm going to do a quick comparison with your business versus a child. Would you sell your child? Would you sell your child if an offer came and they say, hey, I want to buy your child for $22 million. Would you consider that? Would you consider selling your child? Now, would you consider selling your business for $22 million? You know what I'm saying? Would you put your child in the street to go out and make money? Would you expose your child to the public to bring back money? I'm, I'm, I'm basically like saying whoring your child, right? Would you put your child out there as a product or a service? Hey, my little child will service you for $20, $30, $50, whatever your products or, or services cost you. Would you do that with your child? Now, would you sell your products and services to the public if you have a business? You understand what I'm saying? So many times you hear people say, my business is my baby. My, I, I gotta, you know, like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm telling you, you are, you are in it. You're, you're stopping the progress of your business growing. I promise you, man, you are stopping the process of your business growing because you are sheltering your business way too much. You're not giving you, your business is created to offer a product or service to the public to, to make their life easier, to offer a solution in return for a profit. You don't do that with your child. You do not do that with something that you hold dear to you. It is a business. You can erect a new business and dissolve one at any given time. You're not going to do that with your child. You're not going to do that with your baby, your, your grandson, your niece, your nephew. You're not going to do that. What up, Carlito? Salute to you, brother. Uh, you're not going to do that with your child. Does that make sense, anybody? I, I When I told this to the beautiful young lady in Toledo, Ohio, she said, you just saved, you just changed my learning curve and shaved it years. Shaved years off of it, of anxiety, frustration, to the point where you're sitting at a bookstore at a table wondering why your business isn't growing just to realize years down the line, it's you. It's because you are not allowing your business to grow. You're not allowing your business to go to school. You're not allowing your business to go to away for college. You want your business to stay at home with you 24, seven, seven days a week. You don't want anybody criticizing your business like it's a like it's a, a football game or a basketball game. You need to work on your jump shot. You don't want to hear that about your business. Huh? Am I making sense? Is, is, is that making sense to anybody? You don't want the criticism from the outside public because you're taking your business too personal. You don't want people to say anything about your business because you take it personal. Okay, if something's wrong with my business, tell me what I'm doing wrong with my business. If my child is a F up, why is my child not doing well? And let me work on that. Shout out to you, Carlos. Carlos Rico, what up? So I hope this help. I hope this information helps you guys out. I mean, I matter of fact, I know it will. I, I can almost guarantee it is going to save you 
years and years of frustration, anxiety, depression. They don't talk about that. Listen, being an entrepreneur, self-employed, running your own business, there is a lot that comes along. They don't talk about it. They glorify it. You see people on the beach. You see people on their laptop. They're drinking a pina colada. What happens when they get off the beach? What happens when they're going back into their room and they're, you know, on the phone hammering down problems? You know, it takes a lot of work to become an entrepreneur, but it is gratifying. It is gratifying. It is rewarding. But there are certain st- being an entrepreneur. What's up, Pierre? Sell out, shout out to you, champion. Being an entrepreneur, it's basically a strategy. Listen, man, it is a strategy to become successful. There are things that are lined up for you to become a successful entrepreneur. Period, man. Anybody can literally, if you follow certain strategies and tactics and implement certain business systems and processes, you can become successful in business. The problem is people get bored. This ain't exciting. This ain't fun. I need to stir things up. So they, they try something new. That's cool. You could try something new, but when you don't get the results that you're looking for, don't blame it on, you know, these clients ain't, you know, nobody wants to buy my product. Cry baby crap. You know, people don't support Small businesses, that's all crap. That's all BS. Hey, Melissa, we're, don't worry. We're coming out to Wisconsin. We're setting it up now. People have a million excuses why they're, they're not selling enough product. Hey, you ever thought about your product might suck? Have you ever even given that a thought? Like my products and services just might suck. Maybe I don't, maybe I'm the only one that really like my product. (laughs) Maybe I'm the only one that thinks, you know, my product or services is the shit. You ever thought about that? You ever got enough feedback from enough people besides your family that are just going to, you know, again, protect your ego? Ask an outsider, would you buy this? Is this something that you would purchase if you saw it in a store? See, again, remove the business being so personal to you. Excuse me. Thank you for the likes and hearts, everybody. Um, remove the business being, attack the business as if it is, you are not the CEO. Attack the business as if you are the janitor or the administrative assistant. Pretend that the business does not belong to you. Say, this ain't my business. I I just work for the company. But it's really your business. And ask people for feedback. Ask people, what do you think about the pricing? Is the pricing too high? Is it too low? What do you think? Do you like the packaging? You know, are the designs crispy enough for you? Like... Give me some feedback. Give me some intelligence. Tell me what you feel this business needs so we can create it for you and service you. What do you think my this product needs to make your life easier? You understand? Segway, got to give you a quick tip before I sign off cuz I got to get you know somewhere I'm going to give you a tip on how to really create a compelling product and story and presentation for people. You guys ready? If you guys need to write it down, write it down. Create a villain. I'll repeat. Create a villain in your business. The reason why I say you need to create a villain in your business is because on planet Earth, from religion to movies 
to David versus Goliath, there has always been a theme that people tend to be attracted to, to want to engage in. Even boxing with Mayweather and, you know, McGregor, all of those, all of those guys. You create a villain to be the antagonist of your business. The villain is the person that is, is this company or it, it may not even exist. The villain may not even exist. You create this villain. And I, this is a, this is something that's going to help your business grow tremendously. You create a villain that is targeting the victim. The victim is the customer. Okay. The victim is the customer. You're letting the customer know that, whoa, whoa, whoa. This villain over here is about to make your life like hell. You're going to have to conform. You're going to have to do things their way. You're going to have to, you know, follow their rules and all of this other stuff, right? You, your company, your products, your service is the hero. Da -da -da -da! The Rocky Balboa, right? Your company, your product, your service is the hero. The hero that comes to save the day. But to create that, that, that storyline that people are engaged with. Example, Star Wars. You had the dark side. Darth Vader. I'm, 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 I, want, I want you guys to really, really take this in. Because some of the greatest sales and marketing people have created this. And I'm going to give you examples of people that have done this. And you let me know if you feel like they were successful at what they were doing. Star Wars, Darth Vader versus, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I, you know, Luke Skywalker. So you had the villain, then you had the, the hero. The problem was, remember, you have to create the problem. What is the villain going to do to make life miserable for the victim? The victim is the customer. He's going to take over. He's going to implement certain taxes or um, taxes, laws, all that kind of political, you know, you, you see it in political races all the time. Don't vote for this person because this is what they try. This is what they plan to do. Raise taxes on this, cut off health care. You see, they're creating the villain vote for Tiger Toledo for president. I'm the hero. I'm the person that's going to offer the solution to you. You get it? Um, 50 Cent versus Kanye West. 50 Cent was the villain. Boo! 50 Cent, he's a bully. He's trying to bully Kanye West. Kanye West, welcome to the good life. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I just want everybody to enjoy themselves, have a good time. They paired those two up on Rolling Stone. You had David versus the Go Goliath. The Bible. Satan versus God and Jesus Christ. Creating a compelling story with a villain. I don't care how you got to find this villain. If you have to create this villain out of thin air, create a villain that has a problem that is, that is about to implement a problem that you as the hero plan to solve. Okay. Pierre Scott had a comment. Uh, he said, that's right. Mayweather did it in Tiger, you hit me and nailed it on the head. I tell people about Floyd that all the time, no endorsement and all look at him, Tiger, a bad motherfucker. Yeah, you're right. Floyd Mayweather does it all the time. He is the antagonist. He is the villain. He is the guy that people, they don't care who Mayweather is fighting. They just want to see him lose. And because they are dying to see Mayweather lose, People spend big money on pay-per-view. This guy has broken records of, of, of pay-per-views, um, selling out uh, arenas. 
because everybody wants to see Mayweather lose. They don't care who he's fighting. He could be fighting a, a green humpback midget from North Dakota. They want to see that green humpback midget from North Dakota beat Mayweather. And you will see how many people are cheering for him. You know what I'm saying? So the villain versus the hero and the victim is the customer. You have to create a problem that the hero, here I come to save the day, swings into action to save the victim, to make his life easier. Lex Luthor, Superman. You know, I could go on and on and on. And most of the movies that you watch, villain versus a hero. The hero is going to save the day to make the people's lives easier. You can see it in politics. You can see it in religion. So take that tip from your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, which is I. Create a compelling story by finding a villain or creating a villain out of thin air if you have to. You are the hero and your products and services solve a problem that the villain is trying to implement on the victim. The victim is the customer. So I'll, I'll break it down a little bit shorter for you. Villain, victim, hero. Villain, victim, hero. Villain, the person that's going to implement their own ways and you know conformity. I'll give you an example again. Apple computers. Apple and Microsoft. Or Apple and IBM. IBM wants to do this. They want to control the whole market space and, and you know have you, you know, using computers that run real slow and you have to get their own programs and download and do all this crap. Do you want to be subject to IBM's ways of owning the whole market space? Well, we have a solution to that. Apple computers. Yay. Apple computers, Mac. Apple computers is going to offer the alternative, the solution to make your life easier. We're going to make computers lighter, faster, user friendly, blah, 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 blah. Villain, victim, hero. Peace and love to all you guys, man. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, you guys can hit me on the comment section. Uh, don't forget, um, we are doing a house and car giveaway in Illinois by Rucker Holdings. You guys can tune in to that. Um, I'll put it in the comment section. You can win a house or a car. It is the ultimate giveaway. It's the giveaway of all giveaways. So if you're looking to, uh, you know, possibly enter and win a house, a brand new remodeled home and a car, Rucker Holdings will be doing that. Okay. And uh, Malik Youssef of Good Music, a, a personal friend of mine, is doing a songwriter's workshop. So if you guys are musicians, right, and you're looking to learn how to compose hit songs that can actually be on the top 100 billboard, he is doing a songwriter's workshop. You can work personally with Malik Youssef himself. He is a six-time Grammy Award-winning songwriter. He's written songs for Kanye West, John Legend, uh, Rihanna, Beyonce. I mean, this is, that is amazing right there. You know, so you will be able to have access to his uh, contacts, clientele, song placements, and stuff like that. If you're looking to market your business, my 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 child and my uh, <laughs> and my wife, they have a company called Gullyware. Um, it's a full marketing firm. They do logos, videos, uh, you name it. They will do whatever it takes to get your business to that next level and market it correctly. So you can also call 312-799-0687. You may be reaching me, but that's their company. You dig? So peace and love and happiness to all you guys. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.